The painting is officially done. It looks amazing in here. And it only took us two days. <laughs> Psych! See what had happened was... One, two, three, four! The time had come. We were so ready to paint every single wall and cabinet nook and cranny of our little home, but we had no idea the amount of time that we were about to spend prepping, sanding, wiping, taping, painting, so many coats we lost count, but every single bead of sweat and caulk, all of it was worth it to show you this final outcome. We hope this is entertaining, we hope this is helpful, but we have no time to waste, so let's get to it. First things first, it was time to get everything out of the way. So we started with the futon, got that thing out of there. Then we began removing the bed and everything that we had stored in the camper. We also didn't want this exposed carpet, so we made sure to take it out. We also needed to remove any bugs. Baby, it's hot! Mm -hmm. alarm on the fly but it is good to know that Marlon is prepared in case we do have any fly intruders. We had taken all of the cabinets off. Everything was out. It was ready to go. The next step in this process was to sand and basically turn our home into a desert. <laughs> We got to work sanding. We used a combination of this orbital sander along with some hand sanders that helped us to get in the nooks and crannies. We wanted to make sure to get a bit of texture on every surface that we would be painting, especially these tan walls that you see here. They had a texture already to them and a light sheen. So sanding helps to roughen up the surface to give the paint something to adhere to. And it also helps to remove any imperfections. We continued the sanding process on the cabinet doors since we plan to paint those as well. Our goal during this whole process was long-term durability. We wanted to paint and transform our camper in a way that would last. We plan to do an update in about six months to a year, so be sure to hit that subscribe button to follow along. We should have tons of fun adventures in the meantime. Also, everything that we used in this video, we will link in the description below. We hope that this is helpful and that it will save you a lot of time doing research. Okay, we finally got the sanding done. Let's jump to step three. As excited as we are to explore the deserts of America, we didn't want to live in them, <laughs> so the dust had to go. We started removing as much as we could by knocking it off any walls and surfaces and sweeping it up. Then we used a vacuum cleaner to get rid of more dust. Again, we did the same with the cabinets and then we used these awesome tack cloths. They have a nice sticky surface and we wiped over all of the cabinets and all of the camper to pick up any additional fine dust particles because you definitely want to remove all of it before painting or you will paint over it and it will become a mess. Last but not least, we took a very lightly damp cloth to wipe over all the surfaces. This again, makes sure that we left no particles behind and it makes sure that the surfaces are clean and ready to be painted. Next up, we filled any holes from removing things like the blinds. And then if you remember from the original RV tour video, we changed the way that some of the cabinets opened, meaning that where the handle would go would also change. So we patched up some of the holes on there as well. We finally made it to the final step before painting. We taped everything to make sure that we would have nice clean lines when we were done painting. All of this prep took time, but it is worth it. It will make the final product look nice and neat. And now, for the moment we've all been waiting for, it was time to paint. Y'all, we finally got to painting, or we finally finished taping everything off, prepping for painting. It is time to crack the seal. Three, two, one! Not the tool. <laughs> crack the seal, not the tool. So what are we using? Um, paint. <laughs> what kind of paint? Primer. You wanna it's show it? It's important to first prime before you paint. Just a little painter's tip. Shazam! The Extreme Bond Primer. Extreme. Ooh. 
It was so gratifying to finally get to this point. We used a combination of trim brushes and rollers and the paint had no problem going on. So we were booming trying to use up the rest of this primer and we totally forgot that we had all of the cabinet doors. <laughs> so right now we're praying that the primer multiplies, um, but we're just hoping that we can at least get one coat on each of the doors. But other than that, the rest of our home is primed um, and it feels really, really exciting. We have officially used every ounce of this primer and we are so pleased with the outcome, especially on these textured walls. The paint stuck so well. With that one gallon of paint, we were able to put at least one coat on everything. And then on some of these darker surfaces that we had, we were able to put two coats. So we are primed up and ready to go get some more paint. What are you doing, babe? <laughs> What? The next can of paint. So this will be the next coat on all the walls. We have a primer on everything and now it's time to keep going. <laughs> Welcome to the painting madness. I cannot believe it, but we got a whole coat done today. So all we have is one coat left and we are so ready to be done painting. This is basically what I look like going out in public. <laughs> We are so pumped. We have one coat left. You probably can't tell because I've been wearing the same outfit the whole time, <laughs> but I promise it's been a process and we can't wait to get it done. Y'all, today is our last day painting and we are pumped up about it because uh, after this is done, after painting is done, we get to do all the fun stuff like putting on the handles to the cabinets. We got some cool handles from Amazon. Then we get to do all the cool decorating and putting this place together and making it a home. We are excited. Looking for my wife, y'all. I found her in the tub. <laughs> Cheers. Once we finished the last coat of paint, while it was still wet, we used a razor blade to help give us a nice fine line and help us take it off. If you wait until the paint dries, it can dry to the tape and take it off with it. So it definitely helps to do it while it is still wet. onto the door. We chose black to go with the other black accents. The next thing that we are going to be adding are these beautiful golden handles. Yes. Handles. <laughs> there you go. Yay. Yay. So pretty. Oh. <laughs> Rip it out, why don't you? <laughs> I just put it in. <laughs> Before we put everything back together, it was time to seal off the look with some caulk. Cool, so we were told that this extreme stretch caulk was the way to go because you know, in the winter time, everything shrinks and then in the summertime, everything expands. So with all of that, this has give to it and supposedly it's the best stuff to use, so. Highly recommend the extreme stretch. Now we could get back to piecing our home together, so we started with putting up the bathroom door. Oh, yeah, note. If you're gonna put a door together, know what you're doing. Remember how it was on there so that you could put it back the same way? I literally put the doorknob on that bad boy and the hinges Upside down and backwards. <laughs> you know what? Trial and error, baby. Like a dragonfly. A dragonfly. <laughs> okay, in order to make this happen, 
I'm gonna have to install these white hinges first onto the doors and then place them onto where they're supposed to go. You also wanna make it, sure you're using the right screws. I don't know if you could tell the difference, but this one's a little more rounded and this one's flat. With the hinges, you wanna use these flat ones against the door and then you wanna use these round ones on the, um, where the door will connect to the wall. <laughs> so what we wanted to do was have these cabinets be able to open and lock open so that we wouldn't have to worry about sticking our head here to hold the door up to get things out of the storage. So we bought these golden hinges to kind of match the uh, handles. And uh, we got these white hinges just so they blend in with the wall a little bit. Something that came in handy for us was to keep this little paint cup on hand. It has a paintbrush in it. We filled it up with enough paint so that it was covering the bristles a little bit. And we kept a grocery bag over top of it to make sure it sealed in the moisture. You can leave it overnight. It's been sitting there for two nights for us. It will not dry out. And we also kept this little paintbrush on hand. This was super handy for when you're putting cabinets up, if you accidentally nick a corner, or if there's a little spot that you realize that you missed or just needs a touch up, you can do it real quick, put that bag back over it. And it's a lot easier than having to open up a gallon and get everything out again. Um, so yeah. If you happen to get some paint splotches on the floor, all you need is a little bit of Windex. You want to go ahead and spray it and let it sit for a few minutes. And after that, it should come right off. This trick was so handy for us <laughs> because we were a little bit messy with the paint. All clean. I wanted to add some natural texture to the cabinets that were going right here. I thought it would be easier to do that before we put them up. I found this beautiful cane webbing off of Amazon and I'm going to walk you through how I applied it. A key step for the webbing that I chose was to soak it in warm water for about 30 minutes. It absorbed the water and this made it much more flexible and easy to work with. Once it was done soaking, I took it out of the sink and placed it on a towel to dry. I didn't let it get all the way dry and applied it to the face of the cabinet when it was still slightly damp, not super damp, just a little bit. This way it dried on the cabinet and that gave it a nice tight finished look. Next up, I taped sheets of paper together on the face of the cabinet so that I had a cutout to lay on top of the webbing. I found books to be the most helpful to hold it in place while I cut and sharp scissors help do the trick. It fit beautifully. I used an extra tack cloth to wipe down the cabinet and remove any debris. Then I used an old paintbrush to apply Gorilla Glue to the face of the cabinet and the back of the cane webbing. And I put the most in the corners and on the edges just to make sure that they would stick well. After some trial and error, I found that the key to avoiding any Gorilla Glue disasters was to add a layer of wax paper. I put that on top of the cane webbing and then put weighted objects like books and let it sit for a few hours while it dried. Now let's see how it turned out. Three, two, one! They turned out beautiful. We are so pleased with the outcome. Marlene! <laughs> What's up? I know you miss me. So we're just gonna show you around a little bit of like um, some of the stuff that we finished. So these cabinets, I know you guys remember, we wanted them to open this way. I had to get these locking things so that they stay in place. Um, so that's that. And we did go with the gold handles and painted everything white, obviously. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it looks so good in here. Definitely transformed this place with the white paint makes it feel like it's a bigger space and we love it. Something that is so nice about these is when we're driving, they'll stay nice and tight. Before we had these and all of the cabinets, which are great and super handy, but by the time that these were installed, we didn't even need to put it back because it keeps it nice and tight. All right, back to the lab. Wow. wow! Ready for paperwork.
amazing. I love these so much. And right here, you are getting a little sneak peek of the decor to come. We're definitely going to get lots of color in here. We got some retro groovy vibes coming. We're pumped. So yes, it took more than two days, but our little home is on its way to being transformed. One, two, three, four. Uh -huh.